stack the deck and how we're going to make it possible for more people to have the experience I had, you know, to be able to come from a grandfather who was a factory worker, a father who was a small business person, and now asking the people of America to elect me president. Just for the record, are you a progressive or are you a moderate? I'm a progressive, but I'm a progressive who likes to get things done. And I know how to find common ground, and I know how to stand my ground, and I have proved that in every position that I've had, even dealing with Republicans who never had a good word to say about me, honestly. But we found ways to work together on everything from That's reforming great. foster care and adoption to the children's health insurance program, which Thank insures you. 8 million kids. So I have a long history of getting things done rooted in the same values Senator, I've always had. Senator Sanders, a Gallup poll says half the country would not put a socialist in the White House. You call yourself a democratic socialist. How can any kind of socialist win a general election in the United States? Well, we're going to win because first we're going to explain what democratic socialism is. And what democratic socialism is about is saying that it is immoral and wrong that the top one-tenth of one percent in this country own almost 90 percent, almost own almost as much wealth as the bottom 90 percent. That it is wrong today in a rigged economy that 57 percent of all new income is going to the top one percent. That when you look around the world, you see every other major country providing health care to all people as a right, except the United States. You see every other major country saying to moms that when you have a baby, we're not going to separate you from your newborn baby because we are going to have, but we are going to have medical and family paid leave like every other country on earth. Those are some of the principles that I believe in. And I think we should look to countries like Denmark, like Sweden, and Norway, and learn from what they have accomplished for their working people. Denmark is a country that has a population, Denmark is a country that has a population of 5.6 million people. The question is really about electability here, and that's what I'm trying to get at. You, the, the, the Republican attack act against you in a general election, it writes itself. You supported the Sandinistas in Nicaragua, you honeymooned in the Soviet Union, and just this weekend you said you're not a capitalist. Doesn't, doesn't that ad write itself? Well, first of all, let's look at the facts. Are the facts that are very simple. Republicans win when there is a low voter turnout, and that is what happened last November. 63% of the American people didn't vote, Anderson. 80% of young people didn't vote. We are bringing out huge turnouts and creating excitement all over this country. Democrats at the White House on down will win when there is excitement and a large voter turnout, and that is what this campaign is doing. You don't consider yourself a capitalist, though. Do I consider myself part of the casino capitalist process by which so few have so much and so many have so little, by which Wall Street's greed and recklessness wreck this economy? No, I don't. I believe in a society where all people do well, not just a handful of billionaires. Just so, let me just be clear, is there any bill, anybody else on the stage who's not a capitalist? Well, let, let, let me just follow up on that, Anderson, because when I think about capitalism, I think about all the small businesses that were started because we have the opportunity and the freedom in our country for people to do that and to make a good living for themselves and their families. And I don't think we should confuse what we have to do every so often in America, which is save capitalism from itself. And I think what Senator Sanders is saying certainly makes sense in the terms of the inequality that we have. But we are not Denmark. I love Denmark. We're the United States of America, and it's our job to rein in the excesses of capitalism so that it doesn't run amok and doesn't cause the kind of inequities that we're seeing in our economic system. But we would be making a grave mistake to turn our backs on what built the greatest middle class in the history Senator of the Senator Sanders? World. I mean, everybody is in agreement that we are a great entrepreneurial nation. We have got to encourage that. Of course, we have to support small and medium-sized businesses. But you can have all of the growth that you want, and it doesn't mean anything if all of the new income and wealth is going to the top 1%. So what we need to do is support small and medium-sized businesses, the backbone of our economy, 
But we have to make sure that every family in this country gets a fair shake. We're, we're going to we're have a lot more on these issues, but I do want to just quick, quickly get down, the, get everybody in on the question of electability. Governor Chafee, you've been everything but a socialist. When you were senator from Rhode Island, you were a Republican. When you were elected governor, you were an independent. You've only been a Democrat for a little more than two years. Why should Democratic voters trust you won't change again? Anderson, you're looking at a block of granite when it comes to the issues. Whether it seems it's like pretty soft granite, though. I mean, you've been a Republican, you've been an independent. Did you hear what I said on the issues? I have not changed on the issues. I was a liberal Republican, then I was an independent, and now I'm a proud Democrat, but I have not changed on the issues. And I open my record to scrutiny, whether it's on the environment, a woman's right to choose, gay marriage, fiscal responsibility, aversion to foreign entanglements, using the tools of government to help the less fortunate. Time and time again, I have never changed. You're looking at a block of granite when it comes to the issue. So why, I have why not change changed. labels? The party left me. There's no doubt about that. There was no room for a liberal, moderate Republican in that party. I even had a primary for my re-election in 2006. I won it, but Go the money poured in to defeat me in Rhode Island as a Republican. Governor That's what we were up against. Governor Malley, the concern of voters about you is that you tout your record as Baltimore's mayor. As we all know, we all saw it, that city exploded in riots and violence in April. The current top prosecutor in Baltimore, also a Democrat, blames your zero tolerance policies for sowing the seeds of unrest. Why should Americans trust you with the country when they see what's going on in the city that you ran for more than seven years? Yeah, actually, I believe what she said was that there's a lot of policies that have led to this unrest. But Anderson, when I ran for mayor of Baltimore in which, 1999... She actually, just for the record, when she was asked which policies to name two, she said zero tolerance. I mean, there's a number of old policies that we were seeing the result of that distrust of communities where communities don't want to step forward and say who killed a three-year-old. It's a direct result of these failed policies. Let's talk about this a little bit. One of the things that was not reported during that heartbreaking night of unrest in Baltimore was that arrests had actually fallen to a 38-year low in the year prior to Freddie Gray's tragic death. Anderson, when I ran for mayor of Baltimore back in 1999, it was not because our city was doing well. It was because we had allowed ourselves to become the most violent, addicted, and abandoned city in America. And I ran and promised people that together we could turn that around. And we put our city on a path to reduce violent crime or part one crime by more than any major city in America over the next 10 years. I did not make our city immune to setbacks, but I attended a lot of funerals, including one for a family of seven who were firebombed in their sleep for picking up the phone in a poor African-American neighborhood and calling the police because of drug dealers on their corner. We've saved over a thousand lives in Baltimore in the last 15 years of people working together and the vast majority of them were young and poor and black. It wasn't easy on any day, but we saved lives and we gave our city a better future, improving police and community relations every single day that I was in office. In one year alone, though, 100,000 arrests were made in your city, a city of 640,000 people. The ACLU, the NAACP sued you, sued the city, and the city actually settled, saying a lot of those arrests were without probable cause. Well, I think the key word in your uh, follow-up there was the word settled. That's true, that was settled. Arrests peaked in 2003, Anderson, but they declined every year after that as we restored peace in our poorer neighborhoods so that people could actually walk and not have to worry about their, their kids or, or their, their loved ones uh, being victims of violent crime. Look, none of this is easy. None of us has all the answers. But together as a city, we saved a lot of lives. It was about leadership, it was about principle, and it was about bringing Thank people you, together. Thank you. Senator Webb, in 2006, you called affirmative action state-sponsored racism. In 2010, you wrote an op-ed saying it discriminates against whites. Given that nearly half the Democratic Party is non-white, aren't you out of step with where the Democratic Party is now? No, actually, I, I believe that I am where the Democratic Party traditionally has been. The Democratic Party, and the reason I decided to run as a Democrat, has been the party that gives people who otherwise have no voice in the corridors of power a voice. And that is not determined by race. And as a clarification, I have always supported affirmative action for African Americans. That's the way the program was originally designed because of their unique history in this country with slavery and the Jim Crow laws that followed. What I have discussed a number of times is the idea that when we create diversity programs that include everyone, quote, of color, other than 
white, struggling whites like the, the families in the Appalachian Mountains were not being true to the Democratic Party principle of elevating the level of consciousness among our people about the, the hardships that a lot of people who happen to be white have, by culture, by the way. Senator Webb, thank you very much. Let's move on to some of the most pressing issues facing our country right now, some of the most biggest issues right now in the headlines today. We're going to start with the gun. The shooting in Oregon earlier this month, once again, it brought the issue of guns into the national conversation. Over the last week, guns have been the most discussed political topic on Facebook by two to one. Senator Sanders... You voted against the Brady Bill, mandated background checks and a waiting period. You also supported allowing riders to bring guns in check bags on Amtrak trains. For a decade, you said that holding gun manufacturers legally responsible for mass shootings is a bad idea. Now you say you're reconsidering that. Which is it? Shield the gun companies from lawsuits or uh, not? Uh, let's begin, Anderson, by understanding uh, that Bernie Sanders has a D minus voting record from the NRA. Let's also understand that back in 1988, when I first ran for the United States Congress, way back then, I told the gun owners of the state of Vermont, and I told the people of the state of Vermont, a state which has virtually no gun control, that I supported a ban on assault weapons. And over the years, I have strongly supported instant background checks, doing away with this terrible gun show loophole, and I think we've got to move aggressively at the federal level in dealing with the straw man purchases. Also, I believe, and I fought for, to understand that there are thousands of people in this country today who are suicidal, who are homicidal, but can't get the health care that they need, the mental health care, because they don't have insurance or they're too poor. I believe that everybody in this country has a mental crisis, has got to get mental health counseling immediately. Do you want to shield gun companies from lawsuits of course or not? not? This was a large and complicated bill. There were provisions in it that I think made sense. For example, do I think that a gun shop in the state of Vermont that sells legally a gun to somebody, and that somebody goes out and does something crazy, that that gun shop owner should be held responsible? I don't. On the other hand, where you have manufacturers and where you have gun shops knowingly giving guns to criminals or aiding and abetting that, of course we should take action. Secretary Clinton, is Bernie Sanders tough enough on guns? No. Not at all. I think that we have to look at the fact that we lose 90 people a day from gun violence. This has gone on too long, and it's time the entire country stood up against the NRA. The majority of our country <laughs> supports background checks, and even the majority of gun owners do. Senator Sanders did vote five times against the Brady Bill. Since it was passed, more than two million prohibited purchases have been prevented. He also did vote, as he said, for this immunity provision. I voted against it. I was in the Senate at the same time. It wasn't that complicated to me. It was pretty straightforward to me that he was going to give immunity to the only industry in America. Everybody else has to be accountable, but not the gun manufacturers. And we need to stand up and say, enough of that. We're not going to let it continue. We're going to bring you all in on this, but I, Senator Sanders, you have to be able to respond. As a senator from a rural state, what I can tell Secretary Clinton, that all the shouting in the world is not going to do what I would hope all of us want, and that is keep guns out of the hands of people who should not have those guns and end this horrible violence that we are seeing. I believe that there is a consensus in this country, a consensus that said we need to strengthen and expand instant background checks, do away with this gun show loophole, that we have to address the issue of mental health, that we have to deal with the straw man purchasing issue, Senator. and that when we develop that consensus, Senator. we can finally, finally do something to address this Governor crisis. Governor O'Malley, you passed gun legislation as governor of Maryland, but you had a Democratic-controlled legislature. President Obama couldn't convince Congress to pass gun legislation after the massacres in Aurora in Newtown and Charleston. How can you? And Anderson, I also had to overcome a lot of uh, opposition and the leadership of my own party to get this done. Look, it's fine to talk about all of these things, and I'm glad we we're talking about these things, but I've actually done them. We passed comprehensive uh, gun safety legislation, not by looking at the pollings or looking at, the, at, at, uh, at what the polls said. We actually did it. And Anderson, here tonight in our audience are two people that make this issue very, very real. Sandy and Lonnie Phillips are here from Colorado. And their daughter, Jessie, 
was one of those who lost their lives in that awful mass shooting in Aurora. Now, to try to transform their grief 